Okay, Santa came. Oh, Blossom got a carrot. That feels like an attack. And Coral got a lump of coal. What? So as you guys know, every couple of months, I like to show you guys a new outfit from Benetton. And there's a reason that I like working with the Unite Colors of Benetton. And that's because they are an ethical company that cares deeply about the uh, textiles and the materials that go into their clothes. They care about the workers as part of the supply chain. They care about the environment. I actually read recently that they actually have a partnership with Greenpeace as part of their detox program, which is working towards a complete elimination of hazardous chemicals as part of the textiles industry, which I think if you're choosing to buy clothes, buying ones that care about human rights, just for me, seems like a no-brainer. So they're just a company that I really, really like the ethics behind, but also they have really cute clothes as well. And the clothes are all made from really high quality materials, which are built to last as well, which I really like. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I'm wearing today. So first of all, it's my 100% cotton t-shirt, which features none other than peanuts, which I thought was super, super adorable. I've worn it tucked in. However, the t-shirt is long, so you can kind of wear it either way. And as soon as I saw this, I was like, yes, I have to pick this because it's so freaking cute. And then last time I showed you guys those amazing peach jeans. They were a little bit of a thicker jean material. But I wanted something a little bit lighter for the summer, but still with that like looser baggier fit just because I like comfort. So I got these high-waisted 100% cotton trousers and they are so freaking comfy, so light. Literally, look how cute they are. I know I always do this. It's like Claire's showing clothes, stand on a chair, but they're so comfy. And real pockets, actual pockets. So I will leave a link to this entire outfit in the description below. I'm also gonna pin it as a top comment in case you guys wanna go check it out if you're looking for just some straight up adorable pink trousers and an adorable t-shirt. I 100% recommend these. And a big thank you to United Clothes of Benetton for sponsoring this video. Let's go ahead and get into the fun. So my little peaches, welcome back to another episode of Not So Berry. And as if this family weren't a complete wreck and disaster enough as it is, there's now a blizzard, which I just find really fitting and wonderful. So yeah, that's so nice. One thing we need to do immediately oh no <laughs> i was gonna say one thing we need to do immediately to kick off this episode is buy the kids beds and get their room all ready for like being children it somehow has escaped me that we have 26 pounds in the whole world so i can't do that the other thing you guys really want me to do and i will do it at some point i promise is buy a shower sorry a bath like a tub so that we could have washed the toddlers which we never did we washed them in the sink and so that we could also wash the fox which we also have not been doing but in my defense this generation is meant to be a complete wreck and they are meant to grow up dirt poor and in fact the kids are actually meant to go into the family business. Oh, they get they go into the business career, but obviously we know the business career is, is a lie. The business career is the criminal career. So I kind of don't mind the fact that everything is pure wreck because it's meant to be. That's the whole point of this generation. It's meant to be a struggle and I enjoy a struggly generation. That actually makes me very happy. I'm trying to find a bunk bed with a bed under it, but there is also the cute one. And apparently it just does not exist. So that's lovely. Cause I need to get them all like the grown ups versions of their room. Or oh, they're not really grown ups. They're just like kids. So we've got the top bunk here and we need a bunk underneath too. I'm pretty sure you can put any bed underneath. So it's probably going to be what I can actually afford. There we go. Okay, that slots underneath. It looks terrible, but it works and it's meant to look terrible. I could do that one too, but I do want the beds to look a little bit different to each other. We already know that Coral likes to look after his sister Blossom. So I feel like if Blossom was like, I really want the top bunk. Coral was like, that's fine. Just be careful. I don't mind having the bottom one if you want the top one. Just be really careful going up and down the stairs. Fun for it story. I fell off bunk bed and broke my wrist when I was a kid and watched Peter Pan. Thought I could fly, jumped off the bunk bed, broke my wrist. So this is obviously a very tough subject for me right here. But there we go. The kids actually have beds. They don't have desks or anything yet. I do plan to get that stuff in the future. Maybe even having like a two bunk bed situation where they can have desks underneath. Although it's not going to fit in here, is it? But we shall figure something out. Also, soon we'll begin. Oh, why are you being so sad for? Oh, yes, yeah, someone in your family died. Marcel, is it? Marl? Is it Marl a Pokemon? I'm pretty sure it is. But also everyone's sad that the fox has run away again, which honestly is no surprise because these guys do not do a great job of looking after anything, really. But their jobs stress them out and they're heading to their jobs right now. Now, do I still need to hire a babysitter? I don't. Okay, that's good because I feel like I kind of wanted the idea that the kids get left alone a lot. So they've both headed into work now. I'm going to get them both working hard. 
so that we can try and get a promotion in our future. And the kids have been left home alone, which I think fits this like story quite a lot. They're left home alone to look after themselves in a very Matilda-esque fashion. And I like that. And I feel like at this point, maybe Carl, you know, he's only just aged up from being a toddler. But oh, Vixen has returned. Oh my gosh, Vixen, come get your dindons. He's already kind of like starting to realize that, hmm, this is weird. My parents are out all night. They come back with scrapes and bruises and the neighbors seem afraid of us. Something weird is going on here. But he doesn't want like his sister to get like scared by the situation because she's a little bit more gentle than he is. So he's kind of looking out for her and he's like, oh, mom and dad have gone out so that we can watch a really cool kids movie because they don't like watching kids movies. So why don't you get into your pajamas and we can watch a kids movie together? What do you say? And Blossom's like, oh, yeah, I love the idea. So I'm going to put her in her little Jays with her little rabbit slippers all ready for her kids movie. She really wants oh, okay She's have to go welcome back Fixie first though and she got halfway and she's like, oh geez It's a blizzard. I totally forgot that it was a blizzard. Yeah, please get out of the blizzard and let the pajama party begin So there we go. This is so cute. It is like half nine. Honestly, they should be in bed They got school tomorrow. They got their first day of school tomorrow, but there's no parents here to tell them what to do So instead it's pajama party pajama night watching kids Kids. Oh, watching nothing. Absolutely nothing. We're watching not a thing. Watching Spy Kids kind of esque vibes together. Also, I'm pretty sure we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Celebrate Blossom's birthday. You all guys have a shared birthday, and Blossom can do it back as well. Celebrate Coral's birthday too. Happy birthday. We're both children. Wow. And they're excited about the snow. I would have loved to have them going outside and playing in the snow. Unfortunately, it's a blizzard, so I can't. And I've just realized their first day of school tomorrow won't actually be their first day of school tomorrow because tomorrow is Winterfest. So these guys are at work right now, but I'm going to say that on the way back from work, if we do manage to get, we will get promoted. But with our measly 17 simoleons an hour, we'll buy a cheap tree and we'll try and do a little bit of a Christmas experience for them both. Their first Christmas, they might just be getting a piece of coal. No, they're good kids, but they probably just won't won't be getting like, here's a PlayStation, here's an Xbox. Like, it'll be more like, here is something I stole at work. Which, you know, the effort's there. <laughs> the effort, it's, it's about the intention, you know? Oh, and Blossom wants to cry about witnessing the death. This is like, because they have seen a lot. And I think Blossom in particular has seen a lot. So I kind of feel like it's left to like Coral to try and like manage these emotions of his little sister because like, where are the parents? They just ain't there. Not right now anyway. And ooh, Clem is taken aback when a police cruiser pulls up and a detective hops out and briskly approaches her. The detective claims to have incriminating evidence on Clem, but offers her a way out of this messy predicament. She can become an informant. And Clem suspects the detective is bluffing and may not have any legal grounds to detain her. See, I would totally become an informant, but I will get immediately fired from my job. So there's no point. I need to reach level 10 of the career, which sucks because I totally would have done that. Oh, that's not, it shouldn't be become an informant, but like your colleagues like hate you or something. I don't know. There should have been an, a different angle to that. That would have made it more fun. Oh, there she is doing a little sag. No one should have to experience watching someone they care about pass away. I'm so sorry you had to see that. Coral, it's Coral saying it though. I'm here for you. See, he's such a little sensible head. Little sensible head. And she's like little gentle soul. It's probably like maybe next time mom and dad can watch the movie with us. And Carl's like, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. Anyways, bedtime. Go get ready for bed. You get to sleep on the top bunk. And you need a shower before your bed, actually. You go grab yourself a shower and then you sleep on bottom bunk. I also like the idea that Blossom is scared of the dark because uh, I was scared of the dark as a kid and had a bunk bed. So clearly the similarities are just endless. So I'm going to switch on this little nightlight for them so that they've got especially because they're at home in the apartment apartment by themselves i feel like clem was like coral make sure you lock the door and don't unlock the door for anyone no matter who locks don't answer the door and then they're just at home in their little room with their little nightlight on maybe Cole wants the nightlight on because he's a little bit scared he realizes the situation but blossom doesn't so he's the one that's scared oh <gasps> Oh my gosh, we just got loads of money. Bo Bjergsen died. Vincent Trevedi died. Oh no, they just got paid. No, I thought I was getting some bunnies, but I'm not. <gasps> Wait, Clem did get promoted. <gasps> oh my gosh, Clem just saved Christmas. Okay, for all her faults, she did just save Christmas. So she got promoted at work. You've woken up as soon as they've got home. Like, heard the front door gone and gone, <gasps> who's home? Yeah, Clem got promoted. 
So she's now Felina's monk. She's on level four. Keen on Fires did not get promoted, but I think it's because he went into work sad. But we at least get to do a Christmas tree because tomorrow's going to be Winterfest. So I want the tree they can decorate because I think it would be nice for them to like do it together. How much is this tree? $190. That's actually really not too bad. So we'll get a little tree. I'm going to put it right in the middle to make sure that everyone can get around the tree. And then is there like pile of presents? Yeah. See, at this point, I should definitely be buying a tub. However, just work with me here. What do you think Clem and Keen on Fires would spend their money on? Would they spend their money on sensible things like a tub? Or would they blow off their money in like big impulsive payments? Like let's decorate the whole apartment for Christmas for the kids. Thinking that that is like a good thing for the kids when we know that what is actually good for the kids is getting them a bath and not having a stink fox around the apartment the whole time. But yeah, they kind of sometimes just act like big kids themselves. So this feels, I don't know, this feels right. It feels right. So these are the cheapest ones. Pop some of these in here to make this look a little bit more Christmassy. And um, we'll put some of these little fellas on. Oh, these are more expensive. We'll just get two of these for the window. We'll sell them afterwards, but we'll probably lose a bit of cash. Actually, no, just one. No, in fact, I want a snowman in the corner instead. There we go. A little snowman. One dollar. One dollar in the whole world. Which means I won't actually be able to cook a Christmas meal unless I've got some stuff in my inventory I can sell. Okay, sell this. Yes. Okay, brilliant. That is all I needed. So uh, I'm going to have Keenan come in and like put him back into bed again being like, we're home. Don't worry. Thanks for looking after your sister. She's completely asleep this whole time. He's going to go ahead and pop her into him into bed. Oh my gosh. And can you not tuck them in anymore? Oh, that's such a shame. You can only tuck in bottom bunk. I guess it makes sense, but it's still kind of sad. So I'm gonna have them both come in and do a little tuck into bed. Because, you know, they may be kind of absent and total wrecks, but they do still love their children. And in fact, to prove that, I'm gonna put their little birth certificates above their bed. Cute. And, okay, you've got so much energy. Should I decorate the tree? No, I think it's nice to do it as a group. Instead, we'll just get everything. They'll, they'll spend the night waking up and sorting out all of the house ready for Christmas. Oh, and in fact, you know what I'll do? I'll bake some cookies for Santa. But then obviously we actually get to eat them. I'll bake oatmeal cookies just in case Santa has a peanut allergy. You can never be too careful nowadays. And I'll get you to set the table with some like holiday setting all ready for tomorrow. And okay, they're waking up, they're waking up, they're waking up. Okay, okay, okay. Let's turn on some Christmas music. Where's Christmas? Where's Christmas? Winter holiday. You've listened to it once. It's not even started yet. What? There we go. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, wait. We've got cookies for breakfast. Oh, you've got one from his one I made earlier. Look, it's all Christmassy. Why are you waking up so so sad? Because you're grungy. Because you really want a bath, but we've still not bought you one. But it's Winterfest. Yay. What are we going to do for Winterfest? We've got to decorate. I've done the best I can. Be festive. Open some presents. And maybe Father Winter will come. So there we go, kids. Cookies for breakfast. They were meant to be for Santa, but... And I'm like, I'll give you a Winterfest gift. A common upgrade part. No, we've, we've got to get some gifts from Santa because I can't give my child a common upgrade part for Christmas. That is the worst Christmas gift I've ever seen. I just can't do that to them. And you're really tense. Oh, because the utility box is parking again. The body in the hallway smells. Your fun is low and you're stressed about this getting married for money, of which you only have two days left. Two days left and it's stressing him right out. Still though, let's do some nice uh, Christmassy interactions. Complain about Winterfest and we might as well get started on the Winterfest meal as well. Oh, we can just afford it. Perfect. And something in this room has energizing decor, but I have no idea what, but something keeps getting everybody really pumped. But I swear I don't even have that much stuff unless it's a dragonfly. Like what is getting people so... Is it Ash's urn? Is it the fact that Ash acquired level 10 of the fitness skill? That means everybody else is starting... Well, Coral has the fitness skill now? I don't even know. Okay, and why don't... Once you finish our little brekkie, why don't we go and start working? Oh, you want to go build a snow pile? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, while I'm cooking lunch, Christmas dinner, why don't you take the kids outside and build some snow piles? Do them over here. Okay, so these guys are building Blossom and Keen on Fires. Probably also Keen on snow, ironically. Get, get a man who can do both. Uh, building a snow pile here together, and then Coral is building a snow pile on his own. Let's see which one looks the best. Honestly, I'd say the most brain cells are actually held by this snowman because Keenan has minus brain cells. Vixie is also getting involved. In fact, you might have to take Vixie out on a quick Christmas walk after this. Vixie, who, oh, where's she at? There she go. Is yet again stinky and has fleas. Okay, so this is the one that Blossom and Keen on Fires built. Very cute. Love that. You're still working on yours. Why don't you help your brother finish his snow pile? And look, she really wants to get to know Clem. Feels like she doesn't really know her mom that much. Wants to try and get to know her a little bit more, which is cute. Also kind of sad, but mainly cute. <gasps> okay. 
Both really good little snow piles. Honestly, it's hard to decide who's his best. I like them both. Both 100 out of 10. Good job, kids. We've got the foodies all ready to go later. Perfect. Let's pop the cookies in the oven. Blossom, do you mind setting two more of those spotty settings, please? There we go. And oh, I want to be a ninja when I grow up. What do I need to do now to start being a ninja? Oh my gosh, Clem wanted the same thing. She'd be like, oh, I wanted to be a ninja when I grow up too. I'm basically a ninja in my job now. You should totally do the job I'm doing now. This is perfect. Start getting practice in you'll hide it because you're gonna need it from the law. Great parent and just honestly top tier. We love to see it. And why don't we get started on the tree? Are the parents tired yet? No. Keenan is, but you're okay. Okay, so we'll start and work on our tree together. See? It's not all doom and gloom. There is there is some niceness. They keep getting startled by the rats, which is a little bit of a distraction in our tree decorating activities. You know, maybe the rat just wants to appreciate Christmas as well. Let's just not judge the rat, okay? Not on this very beautiful and harmonious day, okay? Clem and Coral just became good friends, so that's nice. And there's some presents in the corner here that we stole from work for you guys, so that's nice. We'll just try and ignore the fact that there's a body literally buried underneath the tree, which is making the apartment smell bad. We'll just pretend that's not happening. Oh! And the power has got up, seriously? On Christmas day, the power's gone out? Are you kidding me? That's just so unfair. I hate that. But the tree's looking great, but we can't see it. Can I light the tree? No, repair the utility but No. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to call my landlord, aren't I? What a day to do. Oh! oh it's back on, it's back on, it's back on. Okay, perfect. And okay, this is the most ridiculously long Christmas run ever. Please come back home. <gasps> Look at the tree, it's so pretty. Come admire the lights, children. <gasps> no, I've not even called you to the meal yet. What are you doing? No, stop it. Stop burning everything, children, with your hunger. And why don't you come and get excited about the presents? Can I still ring the bell? I can. Okay, let me go and call them all to the grand meal. Blossom, you ate yours early. But here we go. Grand meal, grand meal. Yep, the mouse is here. Why don't we just go ahead and put a little mouse trap there before we eat? And okay, Keenan is actually shattered. <laughs> I mean, he was working all night helping put up all these lights and stuff. Can you just sit down for the meal real quick and then go to bed maybe? No, you dare take a piece of this meal. And I swear, Rico, we will be getting in a fight. I'm gonna put that in the fridge just to avoid that. Okay, lovely, delicious Christmas meal. Keenan is fully shattered at this point. I'm gonna go send him to sleep. That's still sparking, so I don't know what the landlord did, but they did not fix it. And kids, you can open a present. Maybe just one. Wait until your father wakes up, okay? In fact, no, you've got... Hmm. Yeah, open one present and then you can play with that, okay? And the power's gone off again. Oh, this is just a disaster Christmas, isn't it? This is just a disaster Christmas. Okay, guys, we'll all open one present whilst your dad sleeps. In the dark, because the power has gone out in our garbage apartment. Okay, what did you all get? Coral got an activity table and you're creative. That's perfect. Blossom got a dollhouse. <gasps> what? These presents are so good. What? What did you get? I don't know what she got, but I can't see it. But whatever. Why don't you kids go play with your new presents? Oh, she got a baseball bat maybe. Oh no, that was from her criminal career. Ooh, I like that. Let's pop that in the bedroom. Ooh, and a nice duffel cash. Love that. <gasps> two duffels of caches in two colors. But you guys look at this. You've got your little activity table and a dollhouse. That's actually such great Christmas presents. And we could never actually afford these for them. So Santa has done a very good job here. And he wanted to get to know your mom. Now you guys can play dolls together. You can get to know her. There you go. Okay, she did not want to play dolls for very long. She doesn't enjoy the dolls, but she'll sit and hang out with you guys. And Coral is making some Winterfest decorations. So all in all, very cute. I don't know how to make father the Christmas come. He appears near fireplaces and we live in an apartment so we don't have a fireplace so I don't know if these guys will actually get to see Father Christmas. This ruling about the fireplace feels very mean on kids who live in apartments. I'm just putting that out there. Ooh, I did notice Blossom slamming the doll into the toy there. Maybe the toxicness of her parents is starting to rub off on her. A little bit, showing in ways such as I'ma smash the dolls from my nice new dollhouse. Oh, and she's tired as well now. She's off to go have herself a little nap too. And they never switch their tree lights on because of the power. Oh. And because they work night shifts, they're spending most of Christmas Day actually sleeping. And the kids are left on their own again. Oh no, they're not completely on their own. Where is she? The devil. She has arrived. You are not meant to be here on Christmas Day, Tessa. Please don't. Oh, Ty is here too. Oh, nice. Oh, oh no, Dana is here. Oh, no, 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 no. And Zach is here. 
However, Dana is here. So Dana is obviously keen on Fires' brother and may have texted Clem inappropriately. So don't love that. We still have no power in the apartment either. Tessa, how about instead of, why are you just watching Keenan sleep? That's super disturbing. Okay. Okay, interesting. Why don't instead of watching Keenan sleep, you maybe fix something for once rather than sabotaging it? That would be so helpful. Yeah, okay, something this in this apartment definitely makes people want to work out. Oh, and the power's back on. Quick, quick, light the tree while you can. There we go. Now the tree actually has little lights. And can the kids like ask family members for gifts? No, I don't think they can. Oh, well, Keenan's still asleep. I don't think he's gonna throw Dana out straight away. I think he's fuming at him. So I'm gonna get him to wake up and immediately start yelling at Dana, being like, how dare you text my girlfriend coming into my apartment? Oh, and Clem was like literally right there, having a good yell at him. How dare, oh, oh, who, who are you? Who is this? Kayla Arnold. We don't let the Arnolds into this apartment. Just go away. Oh, and I think his brother just apologized. I think I just got the apology little interaction. However, he's like, here's your Christmas gift. It's a box of farts. It's what you deserve. When apparently that was a tradition complete for him because he did give a gift. You can't argue with that. Oh, and we're having a little Christmas boogie in here. Should I let them open up? Oh my gosh, she's so tense right now. <laughs> Should I let them open up another Christmas present? Okay, time for some more Christmas presents. I think Ty is gonna open one as well. Of course, when Ty comes around, everyone- Oh no, the interaction got canceled. Of course, when Ty comes around, they all start dancing because Ty loves dancing. So he's probably the one that's encouraged that. Oh, <gasps> they disappeared. The presents are gone. <laughs> oh no. I lost the Christmas presents. I'm so sorry, children. I've lost the Christmas presents. Ah, uh, that was, oh my gosh, a man with cat ears. Who are these people in my apartment? I don't even know. But that was not what I intended to do. I am so sorry, children. At least you've got your crafts table. And should we put up your little, there we go. I did not mean to lose the presents. I don't know where they went, but they are gone. And this needs repairing. We could only afford to get them. We, we didn't even get them the presents. Santa got them one present each and all we could offer them was a repair cog. So I kind of feel like, look, he really wants the bath. He really wants the money. I feel like the fact that the he couldn't get his kids presents for Christmas, he still can't afford a bath. Although Zach is trying to repair our shower. And the fact that we literally have... 12 hours left to make this work. I think we're gonna do ourselves a little Christmas surprise in front of the whole family for monetary reasons. But also, you know, he might just get a little bit caught in the moment. Like it's been such a lovely day with all the family. Things have gone really lovely. I am gonna go ahead and propose in front of all of our family on Christmas day to Clem so that we can get married and get this inheritance money. Oh, we're doing it around the tree? Don't go to the hallway. Why would you do it in the hallway? There's a beautiful Christmas tree there. Actually, you don't want to do it in front of all the family. Oh my gosh, and all these strangers just come and block my view as well. Be more wreck. Oh my gosh, what is happening? There we go. He's gone and proposed to Clem. I feel like a Vegas wedding is in their future. Honestly, I do. And we just got engaged, which means... He's really happy about that, actually. We have 11 hours to tie the knot if we want to get this cash. And we're going to go announce our engagement to all the fans. Cat ears folks can just go. Like, who are you people? I don't know who you all are, but please leave. Gonna make sure we announce the engagement to Surin. Guess what, Carl? I just got engaged. I'm gonna make sure we say it to Surin, like, oh, look, we are getting married. Like, obviously, we're gonna need money for the wedding. So, like, you know, you, you, you obviously have inherited all this money, Surin. And here, look here. Oh, it's in your inventory! The presents have returned! All it took was a little Christmas proposal. And no sign of Camille. Why is Camille not here? Can I invite Camille? I can't. Oh. I'm sad that she didn't come. I got engaged. I'm getting married, Saren. And oh my gosh, we don't get Christmas off. We don't get Christmas off because we're criminals. And the criminal wheel never stops turning. We've got to go to work. You get Christmas off, but Clem doesn't. Clem literally does not get Christmas Day off. Whoa. So I've got to go to work on Christmas Day? What? Okay, that is a memory the kids are going to remember. Mum left midway through to continue the life of crime because crime never sleeps, even though Keenan does on Christmas Day. And the kids are the ones cleaning up as well. I still think it's been a nice Christmas for them. Oh! <gasps> no way! Santa came! He came! Even though we don't have a fireplace, he came! 
I know you're bored, but please, please, please go and say hello to Santa kids. Oh, this is so nice. I didn't think they were going to get this, but they are. They're going to get to say hello to Santa. Oh, make sure you ask Santa for a gift as well, because if you don't like it, we can sell it. And that's what Christmas is all about. I mean, literally, we've done this since Ash's generation, so it's very, it's a tradition in the family at this point, okay? Oh, and Vernon Bailey is here. Who's pregnant? Vernon's here and she's pregnant. No way. A whole other generation moving on. Blossom is getting a birthday gift. A uh, Christmas gift, sorry. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And Coral asked for birthday money and got $187. Don't let your parents realize how easy it is to get money from people using your children because they will definitely do that. They will definitely do that. <gasps> and look how many presents Santa put. Oh, you guys are gonna be able to get so much stuff. Go open some more gifties. Oh, Blossom got a carrot. That feels like an attack. And Coral got a lump of coal. What? Santa's gifts suck. Let's see what you get, Keen on Fires. Oh, you got a yoga mat. <laughs> okay. I guess we'll set this up in here. You can do some yoga at some point, maybe. There's not much room in this apartment, but maybe you can do yoga whilst getting sparks on you. We'll see what Clem gets when she gets home, but I think it's bedtime now. Everyone's really tired, so bedtime. Coral just found the whole thing very tense. Very tense and very boring Christmas for him. Um, we got Winterfest successful for... Everyone. Everyone had a good wins first and Clem finally gets to open her gift. What did you get? There was literally nothing in the present other than sadness and lies. Well, that kind of sums up. I don't, I, I don't, the Christmas? I don't know. Wow. I mean, you are a, a bit of a criminal, so it shouldn't be too unexpected. Why is the fox that she never in the apartment? Fox, return to me right now. I was like, I will use this as a Christmas lesson to buy a tub so that I can finally wash my fox. But why are the tubs so expensive? I don't want to only be able to bath. I want the option for a shower as well. Oh my gosh, this is so expensive. Okay. It's time for you guys to get your Christmas gifts because I've been reading your comments about how desperate you were for this to happen. Here is your Christmas gift. Vixen is getting a bath. I hope you guys are very happy. I mean, the fact that it took her this long, or me, she literally found a fox puppy in the wild and took it as her own and then made Molly look after it. This all shouldn't be that surprising. But there we go, guys. A little winter fest for this chaotic household. Also, a proposal for a wedding that needs to happen in... Wait, where's the stress thing gone? Don't do that to me. Don't take away my inheritance, okay? Hopefully that appears back next episode because I think we've got about nine hours left to get married. So that's cool. So we'll be doing that next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in another. Goodbye.